Hello everyone and welcome back to Sendix Weather Channel. Today we're going to take a look at the prospects for the next couple of weeks with the main models. We'll be taking a look at the UK Matter Faces, which you'll see on your screen right now. We'll have a look at the Icon, the GFS, the GM and the ECMWF, the Midnight Run, the 12s that hasn't come out yet fully. But we can have a quick look at um, what it's showing currently, be updating as we speak. Um, we'll also take a look at the stratospheric data, which continues to look quite interesting. And then um, we'll have a look at the ensembles uh, at the end of the video. If you enjoyed today's video, then make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. Um, we're, we are one subscriber away from 1,100, and I'd really appreciate it if you clicked the subscribe button and watch till the end, because of some interesting developments. Let's get on with it. Right. So, from the outset, with the UK Met Office, this is the UK Met Office run, which they use. Um, this is from the 2nd of Feb, right now. So, tomorrow, we have high pressure building towards our north and east, and winds are in from a gentle uh, westerly, southwesterly, southerly direction. Uh, as we go through into um, this early part of next week, we go um, southwesterly, so quite mild. Then, winds to return more westerly, a bit of a cooler sector with the minus 5 line moving through. Before again, the high pressure starts to build again, it starts to really um, amplify towards Scandinavia, the Nordic regions, and begins to pull in gently a colder easterly wind. Now at the moment, it's not that cold, but you can see what's waiting in the wind, wings to move in. Minus 5 and minus 10 line are just out to our west, and that is ready to move in. It's pretty interesting. We have a look at the icon, you've just seen the end bit, teaser. <laughs> Um, winds are in from the southwest west, so pretty mild for Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday a bit um, cooler with winds in from the uh, west. Um, obviously, it's off the Atlantic though, so it's not exactly cool that cold. Um, then, as we move through um, into the end of the week, high pressure begins to move to our northeast, and we begin to drag in a colder easterly wind. Again, very similar to the UK Met, the cold air is just out to our east. Um, and northeast towards um, Eastern Europe, Western Europe, even France, you see the minus five line moving in. We're on the periphery and about to bring that in because heights are beginning to build to our north, um, north, not just north and west, they're just starting to build to our northwest. We've got a really strong Siberian high, which has been sent, it, sent up to um, <laughs> sent up to Scandinavia there um, with that one. So that's ready to, that's waiting in the wings to pull the winds back into the east there. So that one's poised to go colder. And now, the run you've all been waiting for, the GFS, has been showing some really interesting charts recently. See what it's showing today. So again, high pressure building um, over the top of the country through um, the early part of next week. Then we're going to more of a westerly um, pattern, westerly flow, before high pressure begins to move towards um, Greenland. Um, not Greenland, move towards Scandinavia. Come on. Proper Scandinavian high. Um, things in the wind from the east for a few days. Then we have low pressure trying to break in from off the Atlantic or encroach from off the Atlantic which has a weather front associated with it, which could bring some snow um, as it collides with the colder air we've got in place. Then heights do begin to build uh, northwards. Once again, to becoming a proper Scandinavian high, we drag the wind in from a very cold easterly wind, the minus five line, and you can see just at the end, at 240 hours, so just out of the unreliable time frame. Anything past seven days is unreliable, but 11th of February, you can just see the amount of cold air has increased from the beginning to the end. Not there, but there. There you go. The amount of cold air has increased um, in our vicinity. That high pressure maintains towards Scandinavia and does pull in the wind from a quite cold easterly wind with the potential for a lot of snow. Little lows, little troughs appearing in the flow could bring a lot of snow to the east and southeast depending on the strength of the easterly winds. You don't need a particularly cold easterly to see snow. <laughs> You really don't. Then the Atlantic tries to encroach by the very end of the run, and that's struggling. You can see the elongation in the isobars, suggesting there could be weather fronts, and there could be lots of snow potential with that as well. Could be quite a snowy pattern with the GFS 12Z. It is at the very bottom end of the scale, but it's, you never know. It could it could happen, and I think there is a chance it could. The minus five lines through the country for much of the run, but about a week and a half of, um, of um, quite cold weather there. Um, and obviously, the longer it stays, the colder it gets. Look at the end of the run, the cold pull to our northeast. <laughs> so if we get a proper block, things can happen. We can get proper easterlies, proper northeasterlies. If you keep a sustained block towards Greenland, Scandinavia, and the winds remain from the east northeast, things can happen. Um, so keep watch this space. Things could happen. Right, the GM next then. Um, the, which has been quite pessimistic, keeping it quite mild. Pass from the west, trying to break through every time. Again, very similar for the next few days with that westerly wind through the middle of the week. Then by Thursday, high pressure builds to our north and east. Brings in actually a slacker easterly flow. Um, 
allow some colder air in. And again, there's that weather front, which is going to be producing some snow on its leading edge, you'd expect. Um, before high pressure then builds again, and it builds much more strongly to our north and east, so it begins to move, build more strongly to our north and east, and begins to drag in the wind from a colder easterly. Obviously, it's a bit fat, takes a bit longer to get there, but you can see what's about to be brought in. The beast is right there. Minus 15, minus 20 degree ice burn in this one tiny little bubble. That's definitely not coming to the UK. It'd fade away and dissipate before it reaches us, but it's something to look at, isn't it? Um, then we'll have a look at the AI model, which has been slated recently by a few people saying it's ramping up the cold. Um, this run, not so much, though. It does bring in a slack easily, rebuilds the heights towards our north, but then kind of builds in a southerly wind, so it's quite mild at times. Um, keeps us just on the wrong side, but again, blocking features towards Greenland and Iceland, between Greenland and Iceland, but again, we're on the wrong side, so we're bringing a milder south southeasterly wind there. But it's very close. There's still some cold air trapped to our north and east, but we're not getting that. Look at all that cold. The polar vortex is splitting into two vo into two lobes with a lot of these runs as well. See, it's together in one in one frame, and then it's split in the next frame. That's when things can happen, and it's all down to this. Now, you might see this and be like, wow, what the hell is this? Uh, this is the, um, if you've never seen these before, this is the stratospheric um, data from the GFS latest run, which we've just looked at um, here. This is the GFS 12Z, and this is the run. You can see this is the polar vortex at its root. So you can see here, there's one lobe here um, towards well, Western Europe, over over um, Europe, and then one lobe has gone over to Canada. And what we've got here is some very significant warming, um, which is very, that is sudden stratospheric warming, which is where the temperatures reverse the zonal winds um, in the stratosphere, and they can have a stratospheric response two weeks um, after the event happens. Now, the GFS has been doing this for a few days, and that is a very significant warming of two lobes, uh, which breaks apart or displaces, dis splits the polar vortex at its roots, and that can cause um, things down the line. So um, it can cause colder incursions to be more likely, colder snaps, colder spells. It can increase chances of snowfall it can increase chances of colder air sinking into europe and also america which is like canada would see probably more um colder air but yeah it also it just has the longer term effects but it, it's it just increases the chances does not guarantee colder weather but it increases the chances if you have a significant warming like this it massively increases the chances of seeing blocking to our north and winds in from a colder direction such as the north and the east um, again, the support on this is varied and mixed, depending on what you look at. But, um, like, the ECM's really not backing it. But um, I do think the potential is there for a very significant warming. Sun stress rate warming, not so sure, but there could be a sun stress rate warming. Um, we'll have to wait and see. But what do I, what's my thoughts? What's my thoughts? Well, GFS um, 12Z run here brings in lots of... With that easterly, brings in lots of snow. Um, the east and southeast will be buried with this run. <laughs> Um, Hazel, I feel bad for you in Hulver. You'll be getting buried, but I won't take it too literally. It's, it's a GFS run. It's um, not to be taken too literally because it's it's a long way out. Anything past five days, six days with bloody snow is um <laughs> is unreliable. And there's still a bit of scatter. If we have a look at the ensembles for the GFS, there you can see that we are looking below average. So we're above average at the moment for the next few days, but then around the fourth, fifth, we just plunge below average and stay below average until the very end albeit with a lot of scatter. There's some milder runs um, up here, and there's some colder runs down here, going down to minus 10. There is more colder runs than there were before, but there's more milder runs as well. A bit of a split. But if that, if those milder anomalies or milder outliers um, were removed, then it, the graph would be around the minus 5 line, which is pretty cold. It's cold enough for snow, definitely. If we have a look at the snow out of interest, there's not much there. But again, it's a long way out. It's uncertain. We need to get the pattern nailed down first. Um, but again... Um, if we did have that sun stratospheric warming happen, there would be impacts for the first week of March, depending on whether you want your spring weather, uh, or your, like, your warmer weather, or your colder weather, you don't mind your colder weather again. Could be a repeat of 2013, with some bitterly cold air. I don't think there was a stratospheric warming there, though. Someone let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah, so things looking interesting. I do think we will see an easterly. I think it could be quite potent, quite cold, and there will be further developments. I did say second week of Feb. If Sendik say something, you listen to Sendik, he knows what he's doing. I really don't. But anyway, thank you all for um, tuning into this video. I do think it'll be an easily. I do think it will get cold. 
But we'll have to wait and see on the severity of that. Keep you posted. Thank you all for watching this um, brilliant Send It's Web channel video. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye, everyone.